class, let's take a look at the uh, um, quiz that we just took. This is the first quiz of the spring on exponents, just to be sure everything is in shape. First problem is to rewrite something in radical form in exponential form. So this is just simply y to the fifth divided by seven, excuse me, y to the five sevenths. So remember the bottom of the fraction is the root, the top is the exponent. If I look at z to the 5 ninth, that can be written two ways. That is the ninth root of z to the 5th. Or I can write it as the ninth root of z. All of that raised to the 5th. Either way. Okay. So that's written in radical form. Next is just simplifying radical expressions. Number three, I have a square root. I want everything under there to be perfect squares. 54, I know that is divisible by two. That gives me a 27. That's divisible by three, divisible by three. So what are my perfect squares? The perfect square is gonna be three times three, and then I'm gonna be left over with two times three. So this is three squared times six. Okay, so I can write this as the square root of 3 squared or 9 times 6. I'm going to write this as x squared, x squared, x squared, x. That's how I'm going to represent x to the 7th. And I'm going to write y as y squared, excuse me, y to the 4th is y squared, y squared, and z. What are my perfect squares? That's a perfect square. Those are perfect squares, and those are perfect squares. They will come outside the radical. So square root of 3 squared is 3. The square root of x squared is x. I have three of them. Square root of y squared is y. I have two of them. What is left underneath my radical is 6xz. That's as simple as that one goes. Number four, I am adding subtracting radical expressions. I can only combine like things. So I can write this as 3 square root of 2 times 25 minus 10 square root of 2 minus 2 square root of 2 times 16. When I look at this first expression, the square root of 25 is 5. So I'm going to have 3 times 5 square root of 2 minus 10 square root of 2 minus the square root of 16 is 4. So that's 2 times 4 square root of 2. So it looks like everything is square root of 2. I will be able to add these. So I'm going to have 15 square root of 2 minus 10 square root of 2 minus 8 square root of 2. So that's 15 minus 8. That is negative 3 square root of 2. Okay, number five, I'm looking at fourth roots. That is my clue that everything under the radical has to be organized as powers of four. So I can look at 162. I know that is an even number. That's two times 81. That's divisible by three. Divisible by three again, divisible by three. Because it's a fourth root, I'm looking, does anything happen four times? It looks like there are four threes. That's three to the fourth times two. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the fourth root of three to the fourth times two. And then 32, you can work it out, or you may remember by this point, that's two to the fifth. So this is minus the fourth root of 2 to the 4th times 2. Fourth root of 3 to the 4th is 3. So this is 3 times the 4th root of 2 minus, and the 4th root of 2 to the 4th is 2. I'm left with the 4th root of 2. 3 4th root of 2 minus 2 4th root of 2 is just simply 1 times the 4th root of 2. So my answer is simply 4th root of 2. Number six, fifth roots. Fifth root of 2x is about as simple as that one goes. Fifth root of 16x to the fourth, okay? Well, <clears throat> if I look at this, um, 
sorry, I thought I was adding those. Let me backtrack. I'm going to, let me just backtrack. I'm multiplying these together. So this is the fifth root of, let's just put everything together. 2x times 16x to the fourth. That is the fifth root of 32x to the fifth. Fifth root of 32 is 2. The fifth root of x to the fifth is x. This simplifies to 2x. Number seven is just a test of whether or not you can stay organized, okay? When I look at this, it's real complicated. I'm just going to break it down using rules of exponents and quotients. So this is x squared minus negative 2. That, those are my x's. Let's look at my y's. I've got negative 2 on the top, minus 4 on the bottom. So I'm just using the quotient property. And then z to the 4 minus negative 4. So this becomes x to the 4th, y to the negative 6, and z to the 8th. To get rid of those negative exponents, this is x to the 4th, z to the 8th, over y to the 6. That is your final answer. <clears throat> Number 8, I see a big negative exponent, that negative 3. Remember to make that an exponent positive, anything in the numerator goes to the denominator, the denominator goes to the numerator. So I'm just going to start off flipping the numerator and the denominator. So x cubed y to the negative 1 over 2xy cubed. So it's going to be all of this raised to the third power. Now I've got choices. I can distribute that third power into everything, or I could simplify inside the parentheses first. I'm just going to simplify inside the parentheses. This is going to be x to the 3 minus 1, y to the negative 1 minus 3, all of that over 2. So this is x, and so it's all of this is cubed, sorry. So this is x squared, y to the negative 4th over 2. All of that is cubed. So this is x squared over 2y to the 4th cubed, which is just x to the 6th. 2 cubed is 8. y to the 4th cubed is y to the 12th. x to the 6th over 8y to the 12th power. Number 9. I'm back to cube roots. What can I organize under the radical to be perfect cubes? I can write this as the cube root of 8 times 3, and then b cubed, b cubed. So my perfect cubes are 8, b cubed, and b cubed. Cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of b cubed is b. I have two of them. And then I'm just left with the cube root of 3. <clears throat> Number 2, meant to trick you, but what you have under the square root, you've got something raised to the 0 power. That's just 2 times 1, and which is 2. Okay. Anything other than 0 raised to the 0 power is 1. On to page 2. Evaluate these expressions with exponents. Negative 27 to the 2 thirds power. So this is the cube root of negative 27. Okay. And then all of that is going to be squared. <clears throat> cube root of negative 27. What number can be multiplied 3 times and give you a negative 27? That's negative 3. When you square that, you get... 9. Number 12, 1 fourth to the negative 3 halves. Let's take care of the negative exponent. That's 4 over 1 to the positive 3 halves. Okay, so that is, that's simply 4 to the 3 halves, which is the square root of 4 cubed, which is 2 cubed or 8. <clears throat> number 13, cube root of 3 times a cube root of 9. Um, I can write this as a cube root of 3 times 9. 
That's the Q root of 27, which is simply 3. Negative 2 to the negative 2. Okay, and this one you got to be sure you know that what's being raised at the negative 2 is the 2, not negative 2. So this is the negative of, you think of it like this, 2 to the negative 2. So that's negative 1 half squared, which is just negative 1 fourth. People get confused sometimes. This problem was not this. That would be 1 over, you know, negative 2 squared. This problem would be 1 fourth, okay? This problem is negative 1 fourth is the correct answer for this one. Number 15, I need to rationalize the denominator. Uh, get rid of all radicals. This is a square root. The way you rationalize with a square root is you multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. And I get 2 square root of 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. That is a rational denominator now. I've gotten rid of all radical expressions in the denominator. This one, the fourth root of 8. There are two ways of working this. So you can do it. Like I like to simplify everything up front. Okay. So this is, I like to write this. This is the fourth root of 2 cubed. Okay. So to get rid of a fourth root, I would like to be taking the fourth root of something to the fourth. So if I multiply by the fourth root of 2 over the fourth root of 2, I'm going to get the fourth root of 2 over the fourth root of 2 to the fourth. Fourth root of 2 to the fourth is just 2. So this is fourth root of 2 over 2. That is the simplest form of this answer. Now, if you didn't recognize 8 being 2 cubed, you could have still worked this problem. You could have said this is 1 over the fourth root of 8. And you can say, well, what I need to multiply by is the fourth root of 8 cubed over the fourth root of 8 cubed. That would give you fourth root of 8 cubed over the fourth root of 8 to the fourth, which is the fourth root of 8 cubed over fourth root of 8 to the fourth is just 8. So this is the fourth root of 512 over 8. This can be simplified. So the instructions did not say to simplify, but on a unit test, I might say that I want this radical in simplest form. So this is a rational denominator. I've gotten rid of all radicals in the denominator, but it's not in simplest form. But on this test quiz, I would have taken either one of those as answers. The bonus, OK? Look at that. Look at the innermost thing. The square root of 2 is just 2 to the 1 half. So this whole expression is going to be 2 to the 1 half. The next radical is a cube root. So I'm raising this to the 1 third. The next radical is a, one, a fourth root. So I'm raising that to the 1 fourth. The next radical in this big complicated thing is a square root. So I'm raising that to the 1 half. These exponents need to be multiplied. 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24, times 2 is 48. This is 2 to the 1 over 48. Okay? A bit complicated, but when you see it, it's just the, uh, the rules of exponents. So that is our quiz uh, that we just did with uh, exponents. If you did poorly on this or the things you missed, you need to go back and look at this because this material comes around again on the 29th and uh, 29th of January on our uh, unit test.